When the tail came within reach, Bert had his pliers ready. Working ever so carefully so as not to tickle, he snipped off the barb and eased out the hook. There now, said Bert, only a little bit of a hole. I've got just the thing for that. He reached down in the bottom of his tool kit and brought out a box of band-aids Doc Walton had given him, just in case the lobster ever took a nip out of his finger out of a finger. They were decorated with peppermint stripes, and fortunately they were the kind that and Here's the whale's tail, and here is Bert getting his hook out of it. I'm giggling, Gull is laughing. Stick to anything, even whale tails. There now, Captain Whale, said Bert proudly. I'll wager your rudder won't leak out any blubber, or take aboard any water and get waterlogged now. Just then, ka smack! A whopping big wave caught the tidally idly in a very embarrassing position and jolted her to the bottom of her keel, all the way from prow to propeller. There's the band-aid on the whale's tail with the peppermint stripe. There's Giggle and Gull looking up at it, and Bert looking up at it. Looks like the wave's coming, but we don't really see the effect of it. Bert had forgotten to keep his weather eyes out. What with getting this poor whale out of all the trouble he was in, and hadn't noticed that it was beginning to blow. Tip of his tail snagged on a cod hook, all his blub about to dribble through the hole. Bert started the make-and-break engine and managed to head the tidally idly into the wind, but he knew he'd never make it home. However, he did make it to the leeward side of the whale, and with a firm hand on the tiller, giggle and gull flying along behind, headed clangity-bangity up to the bow of the whale to have a face-to-face -face talk. "'It's blowing a gale of wind, whale!' bellowed Bert, coming right to the point, "'and one good turn deserves another. "'The tidally idly's taken aboard water. "'These two tender planks, I'm a-pumping just as fast as I can pump, "'but the water's above the floorboards, "'and about to stall the making break. "'I'm afeard this vessel and all hands aboard "'are headed for Davy Jones's locker.' No doubt the tidally idly tastes terrible, Bert went on, still coming right to the point. And her barnacled bottom would smart your tongue, whale. The making break would taste bitter as bile, and me, an old deep water man in oilskins and boots, along with this giggle and gull, would make a would make gosh awful trimmings for any meal, but pleaded Bert. Couldn't you just sort of swallow us temporary, of course? Well, this gale wind of a wind blows itself out, the whale gave a little snort and didn't say anything. Apparently, this was a whale of few words. He just... And there's Bert talking to the whale with Giggle and Gull laughing behind. And the whale looks like he's smiling a little bit. Opened his mouth wide and said, Ah, in the classic tradition, Bert set the throttle of the making break at wide open and chug it a bang, chug it a bang. Firm hand on the tiller, giggle and gull flying along behind, guided the tidally idly into the whale's mouth and navigated the length of the gullet and into the whale's tummy without so much as touching a tonsil on the way down. And there's the whale's open mouth. And there goes Bert. <clears throat> well, said Bert. I naturally expected it to be dark inside a whale's tummy, but I didn't expect it to be as dark as this. A few portholes for light and ventilation would improve the design of this animal. The idea struck. The giggle and gull is funny, and she started giggling again. Bert was bending over and bumbling about in the dark, trying to find his lantern. He bumped his head on the make and break and yelled, Out of my way, you chuggity bang bangified bunch of old iron! Tee hee hee! This made the giggle and gull laugh fit to split. Gull, said Bert testily, some day I'll gaggle you. I never realized until now how limited your vocabulary is. You'd be a poor companion to the shipwrecked on a sunny desert island. You're even worse in the dry dock. Down in this dark, damp tummy of a whale, if I had my choice, I'd take a dictionary every time. Bert had found the lantern and was feeling around, trying to find a dry spot on which to strike a match, when he had a very disquieting thought. Supposing this whale didn't hear every word I said out there, 
in that gull of a wind, in that gale of a wind, yet he asked. What if he doesn't understand the English language red letter perfect? Or maybe that he's absent-minded. He might not know or remember that we're supposed to be temporary guests, so to speak. Yup, giggle and gull, Bert continued. We'll have to make sure we get ourselves unswallowed. He finally struck a match to use the seat of his pants. Well, he said as the light flared up, I naturally expected pink would be the color of this whale's tummy, but I wasn't prepared for the identical pink in Ginny Poor's pantry. Yup, like a big pink cave, that's what it is. Bert checked over his boat and found that the spot where the wave had slapped the tidily idly on her tender bottom would need considerable caulking, patching, and painting. In fact,